Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler teaching communication systems. I'm teaching this course using this modern digital and analog communication systems textbook. So if you're interested, you can follow along in chapter four. In this video, I'm going to be discussing an introduction to chapter four, which will be generally concerning various types of modulations. And in this introduction video, we're going to look at the difference between baseband and carrier communications. So in general, if you have a baseband, this could be considered to be the frequency of the original message. So an easy way to think about this is if you have a voice signal, just like you hear me talking now, this is containing components that are usually between about zero to 20 kilohertz. Now, if you modulate a signal, you would select a carrier frequency that transports the baseband at a frequency above the baseband. So for example, you've probably all listened to radio, and AM radio contains frequencies from 500 to 1500 kilohertz. So clearly this, uh, this frequencies of the AM radio are much higher than the, the voice. So we are transporting the voice signal in the baseband. We're, mod we're transporting it using a carrier frequency that's much higher than the baseband. Now, uh, you can think of some traditional analog modulations, and these, these are usually very traditional systems. So AM, FM radio, these are traditional analog modulations. And then also, depending on when you grew up, you probably remember, uh, you may remember television being analog versus uh, at some point in the 2000s, they began to require television to be digital. So a lot of traditional communication systems were analog, and so this is a good place and a good way to learn general modulation and general communication systems is to start from the easiest, the most classical, the first place the engineers looked at these modulations and then build up into the digital. Digital modulation includes things like two through 5G plus whatever is beyond should be digital modulation. Uh, additionally, your cell phone probably has Bluetooth. This is a digital modulation. Uh, you may have uh, internet that is via DSL. This is another type of digital modulation, in fact, it stands for Digital Subscriber Line Internet. So chapter four is going to discuss these uh, classic analog modulation schemes. And then uh, chapter five and six, those ones discuss more of the digital schemes. Now, please do note that some of the digital schemes, right, and some things that you might be familiar with, such as the pulse amplitude modulation, uh, these are technically baseband signals. And we'll take, we'll create these digital pulses by sampling uh, analog signals. So don't uh, get too confused. And you may see that we use some uh, things like uh, pulse amplitude modulation. Even though it says modulation, it's not actually uh, a, a specific type of modulation. Um, and, and we can consider those as baseband signals that haven't been modulated. And you can see that this chart, which you can uh, go and find on Wikipedia, but it kind of breaks down the ways that you can consider modulation. Uh, and obviously the two big branches are the analog and the digital. And you can see that the um, these uh, PAM, these ones, right, these take analog data and sample them. So we may use some ideas from this analog data while we're discussing uh, other modulation schemes. So don't get confused either that this uh, M says modulation, it's it's not uh, a specific type of modulation, whereas these ones are modulated, right? We're modulating uh, amplitude, frequency, or phase of the carrier wave. And in these ones, you are have a digital carrier. So the, the focus of chapter four is, are these branches on the left side? So we're looking at modulation, we're looking at analog carrier, and we're dealing with analog data. So, what is modulation? Well, we'll move a baseband voice message to some carrier frequency, FC. The message becomes the amplitude of some cosine wave. So we can say that there's some signal, S1T, and our message, my voice, is now modulating. Uh, it's, it becomes the coefficient of this cosine wave, which is at a higher frequency, FC. So this moves all of the contents of this baseband voice message up to any carrier frequency, FC. You can use uh, Euler's formula, Fourier's properties, et cetera, but can you prove uh, how, how this goes from here to here? We'll look at this in, in class later. 
So now considering that gen an even more general wave, an even more general wave or general signal in the time domain, we can see that you can take your message and do three different things. You can make amplitude in green. You can make that a linear function of the message. You can take the carrier frequency and make it a linear function of the message. Or you can make the phase a linear function of the message. The amplitude modulation is the easiest one to understand because it has linear effects. The frequency and phase modulation schemes end up being nonlinear, and you can quickly think about this because if you're multiplying a constant frequency by a message, this is going to result in a constantly changing frequency. And so this means you're going to, if you want to find the frequency at any given time, you're going to have to begin dealing with derivatives or integrals. So that results in a lot of nonlinear effects. However, amplitude modulation has linear effects and is easier to understand. So that is the focus of chapter 4.1, is to begin with amplitude modulation. As we go forward in this class, do not forget that we can define the frequency as a radial frequency or in hertz. And depending on what is convenient, so depending on what type of math we're doing or what type of plot graph we're looking at, we will continue to switch back and forth without warning. So always remember right, that this 2 pi f is equal to the radial frequency.